everyone i am professor sunil shah from the department of environmental engineering kt is college of engineering kolhapur maharashtra i have prepared this video for presentation in international fdp on environment and sustainability the subject of this video is lake conservation earlier i have prepared a video in the first week based on nitrification from the water and wastewater and in the second week i have prepared a video for the application of nitrogen removal that is conservation of lakes lakes in india are becoming very very much polluted due to the discharge of untreated or partially treated wastewater uh, particularly nitrogen and phosphorus concentration in the lake water is becoming the most important problem for eutrophication of lakes one of such a lake case study which for which the detailed project report was prepared by me for my institute has been presented in the second video which was already published on youtube the link is here from these three videos i am expecting the outcome that the student will explain nitrification and denitrification process for wastewater treatment he will explain methodology for lake conservation various components to be included in the conservation of lakes he will be able to explain water quality criteria for lakes and discharge standards for treated sewage and components of carbon footprint central pollution control board government of india has classified our surface water courses based on best use criteria they are classified as class a b c d and below e level based on the use for drinking water source without conventional treatment but after disinfection outdoor bathing drinking water source after conventional treatment and disinfection propagation of wildlife and fisheries and irrigation industrial cooling and controlled waste disposal for these designated uses they have given criteria like what should be the total coliform number that is the presence of mpn most probable number per 100 ml ph dissolved oxygen bod free ammonia sodium absorption ratio boron etc government of india also has published the discharge standards for treated sewage in inland water course and for irrigation in 2017 government of india has amended the standards and they have implemented more stringent standards for discharge of treated sewage either for inland water course or for irrigation further they have classified that characteristics based on either that is from metro cities or all state capitals except few as shown on the slide whereas for the other regions in the states the standards are somewhat liberal one in this discharge standards they also have included fecal coliform organisms that is mpn less than 1000 so this is amendment and still in uh, ngt it has been placed that more stringent standard should be implemented also it has been stressed by ngt that you should include nitrogen and phosphorus which are the culprit for eutrophication of water bodies when to control such a type of water pollution from lake water bodies normally the waste water entering into the lake is intercepted diverted and treated in sewage treatment plants though sewage treatment plant reduces the pollution of the water and increases the quality of the water then also such a type of plants are responsible for carbon emission now carbon emission from sewage treatment plants is dependent on various factors 
the first and important factor is how much wastewater is being treated what is the quantity of wastewater is being treated in the treatment plant the second important component is wastewater characteristic such as biochemical oxygen demand chemical oxygen demand nitrogen phosphorus etc the third important component of carbon emission is chemicals used various chemicals are used in the treatment of wastewater they may use external organic methane such as uh, external organic matter such as methanol for nitrogen removal they also use coagulant such as ferric sulfate ferric chloride polyaluminum chloride alum and polymers also activated carbon ion exchange raising and anti foaming agents are used so those are used and also they are forming the part of carbon emission then another important component is input energy now basically the sewage treatment plants are classified as either aerobic treatment or anaerobic treatment if it is aerobic treatment then lot of energy input for aeration of wastewater is required which ultimately leads to the carbon emission whereas if it is anaerobic treatment then the end product of anaerobic treatment is normally methane and carbon dioxide which are again ultimately greenhouse gases then the next component is input transport normally the transport of treated wastewater as well as sludge the sludge which is coming out of the treatment plant also the screenings grit compost ashes all those are to be ultimately disposed and they there needs a transportation which ultimately again contributes to the carbon emission overall sludge generated from aerobic or anaerobic treatment is leading to the carbon emission normally domestic wastewater treatment plant generates about 30 tons of carbon dioxide per year per mld of wastewater treated the sustainability competition normally stp needs a regular maintenance whatever the screenings are there those are to be regularly removed the grit which is accumulated in grit chamber is also to be removed then it comes primary sedimentation tank then the sludge which is uh, settling at the bottom of the primary sedimentation tank is needs to be rem uh, removed uh, regularly then biological treatment process such as activated sludge process again waste activated sludge which comes out of the treatment needs further treatment and disposal so regular treatment or regular say maintenance and operation is one of the most important component of sewage treatment plants normally the design life of civil structure for sewage treatment plants is considered as a 30 years whereas the design life for electric and mechanical components is 15 years q for Thank